Now then, how are you doing? Um, today, I'm going to paint you some summer foliage. Uh, now, as you can see, I've already pre-drawn it out using a very light burnt umber. And what I like to do when I'm painting summer foliage is I always like to start by producing a very loose, wet in wet underwash on which I can build my foliage. So I'm going to start with, uh, by doing that. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to use two colours initially. I'm going to use cadmium yellow and I'm going to use Prussian blue. My two favourite colours. Uh, for, uh, it's not everybody's favourite colour. I've seen the blood rush out of artists' faces at the mere mention of Prussian blue, but I like it, so there. All right, somebody's got to. I'm going to start off with a wet in wet wash then, uh, which means very simply wetting the whole of the area where the foliage is going to go. And I'm bringing it down just to the tops of the wall and roughly painting around the uh, the larger of the tree trunks. It doesn't matter if I if I paint over them in a couple of places. There we go. Pretty straightforward. All the way down there, down to that point. In fact, I'm going to bring it right down to there. All right, so uh, it's a summer scene, which means um, green foliage. And as I've already said, I like to use cadmium yellow and Prussian blue for my greens. I'm not going to mix them together initially to create a green. Uh, the green, it, that's just going to happen organically. At some point, the two colours will mix together and, uh, and we'll get green. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's a wet in wet wash, of course, which means it's unpredictable. Um, so fingers crossed on this. Let's see how this goes. Just, just check that I've not missed any areas. Uh, that'll do. That will do. OK, watch out for the drips as well. Just get myself a little piece of uh, uh, kitchen roll here just to watch out for the drips. OK, so cadmium yellow for starters, I think. It's as good a place to start as any. Uh, as I say, it's a wet in wet wash um, and it's, it, 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 the intention is for it to be as loose as possible. That was roughly sort of an impression of where the foliage is going to go. But I'm not, at this point, I, I, I don't want to get too, uh, you know, I don't want to get too sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I get too focused in on trying to paint individual leaves or anything, anything like that. It is just a rough uh, impression. Anyway, that'll do. Watch out for the drips. There we go. Uh, now I'm going to take my um, Prussian blue. and I'm working with my big one inch silver range brush here, which is an excellent brush for this particular task. I've mixed French ultramarine there. How many times, how many times do students say to me, I've mixed up the wrong blue and I've just done it for you on camera. So how do I feel about that? Well, what a nana do I feel? Well, I don't want Prus uh, French ultramarine. I want Prussian blue, which is there. That's better. <laughs> okay, Prussian blue. Here we go. And I'm working quickly because it's a wet in wet wash. Things happen quickly when the paper is damp. I've got to watch out for the drips and I don't want it to dry off. So just test. That'll do. Just work in there. Nice and loose. Oh, lovely. Prussian blue. Mm -mm. The thing is, the blue can represent different things. I'm putting it in here. Um, it can represent gaps through the foliage. It can represent the sky. Or it might ultimately represent darker areas of foliage. Uh, at this point, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a wet in wet wash. Uh, it's, got, it's, a, it's, you know, it's unpredictable. Um, and quite frankly, if, you, if you're painting in watercolour, you have to accept the unpredictable. Uh, watercolour has this habit of doing what it wants to do, not what you want it to do. But you already know that, I'm quite sure. If you paint in, if you paint in watercolour, you know exactly what I mean. All right, so that's, I'm getting, a, um, uh, you know, I'm getting a, a rough impression of sky and foliage here. I'm going to dip back into the cadmium yellow and just 
work into the blue, for instance. Just break that up a little bit. Um, as I say, I don't, I don't want to be too precise at this point. And you can also see, hopefully, that, that there's a little bit of, um, sort of cross-contamination between the cut two colours. And it is starting to go green, which is a, which is a good thing. Uh, just dip back into the blue as well, just break that up there. Now, I want it to be loose. Uh, so it's very important that I don't uh, overwork it. That's always a danger with, um, with something like this, certainly with watercolour. Just build that up there. I need to, I need to stop. I'll stop. I'm quite happy with that, actually. Uh, just maybe... Oh, now I'm going to go in there. There we go. A little bit in there. Just a bit in there. OK, that, that's going to do me. Now, while I've got that green and the green is starting to appear, take a little bit of the blue and just mix it into the cadmium yellow. While I've got the green, I can also drop it into the grass verges. So we've got some grass down here. Again, oh, I'm not going to be too, um, too bothered about precise details at this point. Maybe vary it slightly, just drop a bit more yellow in there. There we go. Nice and loose. You'll notice I've got some puddles drawn out. I will come to those in the in my second half. There we go. OK, so um, what we have here then now is a nice, loose, impressionistic version of summer trees. It was a wet in wet wash, so I dropped the cadmium yellow in there and I dropped the French ultramarine. I didn't drop the French ultramarine in there. I nearly dropped the French ultramarine in there. I dropped the Prussian blue in there and I encouraged the two colours to bleed together and fuse together in a completely random and natural way. You know what? I'm not even bothered if I get a few little uh, back runs in there because that'll all add to the texture of it. So um, while that's drying, I'm just going to put a little bit of colour on the walls. I've got some stone walls here and for that I want to mix up a nice neutral grey. Now the two colours I like to use for this are French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. If you take French Ultramarine and then add Burnt Umber to it, small bits at a time, you'll find the two colours neutralise each other and you end up with a lovely natural neutral grey. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Burnt Umber at a bit at a time, just add it into there. There we go. Don't do it the other way around. Don't add French Ultramarine to Burnt Umber because it doesn't work quite so well. That'll do me a nice neutral grey. And with this, I'm just going to paint in my walls, leaving, just making sure to leave a highlight along the top edge. There we go. You'll see why later. I'll just sort of flick that down into where the grass is. I'm not painting individual stones in there. I might leave the odd little random highlight, but um, that's random and it's unplanned and it's deliberately unplanned. A little bit, a little bit on here. Again, leaving the highlight along the top edge. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of little highlights uh, just appearing in there. I mean, basically, if you're doing a dry stone wall and you have uh, little highlights appear, just places where your brush has missed. Don't be in too much of a hurry to paint them out because we can use them later. OK, so I'm going to just quickly paint that in there. Again, leaving a few little, a few little highlights there. Flicking it down into where the grass verges to create some negatively painted blades of grass. OK. OK, so I'm happy with that now. Uh, so I've got my wet in wet underwash ready prepared for the foliage. Um, I've got my walls established. Um, so I'm going to be coming back later. I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll see you uh, a little later on uh, when I'm going to complete the scene for you.